Hi, it's Carl here. Here I am today at the wonderful, wonderful place um, in Matlock in Derbyshire in the UK called Pack Horse Nurseries. Um, I've been here before many times, but I just thought I'd do a, a little update as actually a viewer of my channel pointed out a particular maple called Killarney, um, which has the most awesome, awesome autumn colours. Um, I'd seen this at Western Burst as a full grown tree and mentioned that um, this lovely chap called Hilton, who's the owner here, um, had got one or two left. So a, a quick uh, email and one was secured, which we'll show you later. But here we are. Um, why not have a look at the, uh, these, these lovely trees? So we've got low grafted ones here that are staked up, like this Ryusen. Lovely starfish over there. And again, for those people that, you know, may be selecting a maple at a whim, really, or from the selection of the local garden centre, we don't really have to do that. What we can do is go to a dedicated place like this and, you know, have a massive selection of trees, speak to wonderful people like Hilton, the owner, and get a really good idea about what's going to be suitable, what's best for you. It's ironic that people might take a very long time over picking a toaster or a kettle in, in a shop or something to get it right, make sure it fits, make sure it's applicable to what they really want, and might, might sort of rush the decision on buying a, an Acer. It's also very good, I think, for improving your knowledge of the trees. You can sort of have a look, have a peer at the labels try and understand, you know, a bit more about them. So Hilton would describe this as being late in the season, there's, there's not much left, but my goodness, looks pretty good to me. And good information, um, nicely put together as well on that uh, cascade there. What you also find at this time of year is it's uh, August in the UK. We do have a situation where the trees of the smaller trees, particularly, have been growing all year. So, in fact, they're kind of bigger than they were to start with. So, if they have not sold, it's almost like you've got a, an extra season's growth out of them before you buy for the same price. So, that seems like a, a pretty good pretty good setup to me so if you look at something like these ukigumo down here as you can see you know just just 20 pounds for a for a, a really decent size plant Just walking around here, some some firm favourites like Shana. It's interesting at this point in the season as well, because you can see which ones have grown faster, so to speak, to these lovely, lovely examples over here. A face of pomatum starfish. Have grown sort of fairly fairly fast. Where these cirrusuanums here are at the same kind of price. Have have not, but nothing wrong with that, but it's just a good guide to how, how the trees are gonna progress really. It's interesting, this is a, a typical polytunnel. So it's permanently in shade effectively. And a little bit of, tiny bit of scorching on one or two leaves on the Shiraswanum. Nothing wrong with that, absolutely fine plant, healthy. 
but it might just be an interesting guide that given the fact these are grown in these circumstances, you know, they, it's telling me they need a lot of shade. But there again, because they're not in complete shade, you've got plants like this, which looks absolutely stunning. And that's a, a classic aurium, which is lovely. So again, you find some of the garden centres, they, they, they're in so much shade, they, the colours never develop. Well, this is a much more controlled but realistic look at what aces can actually, you know, how they perform in, in the real world, really. So just, just absolutely lovely. So again, sold a lot of stock this year. Um, Hilton was saying that maple growing's as popular as ever. So good to see that, really. And once again, you know, there's varieties here that I, I, I don't know, I've not heard of, but it's just lovely to see so much variation available. There's a really, really nice ready green tree. And here we are with my new little pride and joy. So this is Kalani, which as you can see, sort of is boding well for the, the autumn really. Um, it's already a really nice sort of orangey, greeny color. There's also from the pack horse, you get a nice little label here with some information um, that's very specific to the tree, actually. This isn't just generic, you know, just keep in, keep in shade and in the afternoons and don't water too much. I mean, it, it's more specific to the actual cultivar you're buying, which is absolutely lovely, really. But there we are. Um, interesting that this fella's actually got some samaras on it. A very strange year this year actually very damp conditions and a lot of trees even though they're quite immature have have have, have done that but yep yeah, he's looking absolutely lovely so we can get him home soon and uh get him all sorted out so yeah really happy so just to say that uh, a, a good day out to me ends in the maple in my my rear view mirror I can move the parcel shelf. I can admire it as I as I drive home. Um, but you know how to transport these safely can be an issue. I'm on my own today, so I, I don't have anyone to sort of hold on to it. But really, luckily, um, this car comes with because it's electric and, and green. Of course, it comes with a, a maple tree holder they, they they provide. So there we go. Inside the coils of the uh, cabling there and uh, really re really secure so yeah really happy with that I don't know why they provide these things but uh, I'm uh, more than happy with uh, to take advantage so here we are back home with my new friend very nice just see there's hints of oranges there which uh, bode well for the uh, the autumn really so what do I do now? Um, the problem is it's getting on. It's, it's the end of the first week of August in the UK. And being honest about it, not perhaps a, an ideal time to pot a tree. So what I think I'm going to do, I've got two options. If it were any more late in the season, I might actually just put this literally in there because it's a good fit. And leave it. I mean, leave it till next year. So it's been growing quite happily, sat in here for all this time. What, what, why change matters, really? But what I'm into now is, rather than just sort of assuming anything, let's find out. So if we lift this fella up, we can see there's a, 
a good massive root system that's there. So if this sort of started coming apart or it wasn't really sort of uh, as, as dense and as rich as that, I'd, I'd, I'd think twice. But on this occasion, what I'm going to do is I will pot it um, and I'll, I will pot it in this pot, which is just, you know, just slightly bigger than what it's already in. The reason I'm reluctant is because I don't really want to give this a load of nitrogen and new compost and give it a massive sort of push at this time of year, really. So it's August, September, end of September, October, the tree needs to actually start to shut down, not to sort of grow loads because that new growth could be subset to, to frost and stuff like that. So a bit of a swings and roundabout scenario here, but I've got a pot that's, as it happens, more luck than judgment, it's the last one I've got, kind of just fits it quite well. So if I, I pop it in there, it'll get a little bit of a, a lease of life. I mean, a lot of these trees actually are going through a bit of a growth spurt at the moment. They, they do this at this time of year. So there's a little bit of growing left to sort of establish itself, I suppose. But again, it, it's not ideal, but things aren't always ideal. So I think on this occasion, that's, that's probably the way, the way forward. Just wanted to mention as well that when you when you buy a tree from a, a, a proper ASA nursery like this, you know you might well find that there's debris on the top and little little maple leaves that have come off. These are these are previous years, and again it's not going to you know look so pristine and and so sort of showcase as you would find in a a major sort of nursery train or something like that. But tells all sorts of plants but I think it gives it a kind of credibility I mean the, the shiki, shishi yashira over there was almost sort of full of previous year's detritus if you know but that's what happens I mean these things are, are actually grown on for a reasonable length of time this tree I'm thinking is at least four years old I would say um, or it takes that, that amount of time to get it here and you can tell from the graph point as well, it's not just been recently done. So what Hilton will do is make sure that these things are properly taken. He won't let, let them out of the business until he knows they're actually, it's worked and that's going to be absolutely sound. And, you know, that, that process of the two trees kind of coming together in that way is, is absolutely fine, really. So, again, th this is what a proper tree kind of looks like, not something that's doled up and to look pristine but actually has a not a not such a great pedigree really so yeah food for thought so there we are inside the pot there's always the opportunity to a sort of jiggle and a level there's not much in this case but i can i can certainly rock it about to get it level so we'll put some some compost in there again mentioned this many times but i do use that mixture because it comes up quite a lot in the comment section of um half erasious or, or acidic compost and half of a sort of mature plant compost really um i'll just put some of that in the old pot and you know i can't help have a, a little tidy up while i'm here i suppose and then no need to sort of slip pot this because it's formed that well it's that sort of secure in itself really that i'm just going to go around with some compost and sort of embed it all and in that way so again i'm not going to pile any extra up i'll put this some obviously some of, there's a little bit at the bottom to raise it and then we're just popping some round here in that case again the choice of the compost it's, it's it's generic and it tends to have um too much nitrogen in it for for aces really so after this, I will, I'll only be feeding it um, with proper acer feed to kind of limit, limit what happens. It doesn't mean that it's a disaster if, if the acer sort of grows too, too much into the winter season, but it's just a bit of a shame for it to put all the effort into to growing and then for it only to sort of simply die back uh, because it, it's grown too late and the early frosts have got it really. Having said that, if I give this a little bit of TLC and put it by my garage wall or something like that to protect it from frost, you know, give it a sort of slightly better advantageous position, then uh, that, that really can't hurt either. I 
it's just an opportunity we we're getting there with that actually to have a little look at the label again so Ace of Pomatum Canali planting well drained neutral to acid soil so if it needed something special then they would be on this label uh, I'm having trouble fighting through the through the tree here yeah so if he, if he doesn't say anything in particular we'll keep, we'll give this a sort of typical morning zone afternoon shade kind of treatment really um it, it wasn't sold to me as being sort of amazingly heat tolerant or something like that but uh, just a, a great general purpose plant so with that sort of firmed in there as usual and you've seen me sort of go and get this so we might as well complete the process i i think a bit of bit of woodwork on the wood bark on the top to mulch it keep that away from the center we don't want that pole up there and sort of getting this all wet the graft point is way way higher so you the root systems down here the graft point's nice and clear of, of you know piled up anything so it's not going to get wet and cause a problem there as well and then i guess i'll give that some water um it's going to be drier tomorrow so we'll give it a, a decent dollar for water and there we are so the end of a great day out um i think it's if you can get them home and, and get them potted and you don't have to um, they would stay in their technical pots until next year really but to, for me you know busy life it's just a, a job done i suppose and uh, hopefully we'll come back to that and enjoy those amazing colors take care so i really hope you're enjoying the content of these videos if you are if you could like and subscribe to the channel that'd be fantastic and please hit the notification bell as well because that way you'll know when I upload more. I'm really, really pleased with how things have progressed and this little channel sort of growing quite nicely, really. So thanks to all those that subscribed already and a special thanks to all those that ask questions or, you know, have ideas. And please let me know if you want any more different content because we can do that. And I hope to see you soon in another video. Cheers.